In this video, I'm going to talk about the modify panel that you can find on the home ribbon in AutoCAD. I have some objects drawn in model space, and I'm going to go through these various uh, modify tools. Um, some of them you maybe have already used, but I'll go through those quickly anyways. Move. Uh, with that one, the, se the sequence of, um, of steps is to select what you want to move to provide a base point, can be anywhere, and a destination point. The copy command works similarly. Uh, select an object, press enter, provide a base point, and it can be snapping to something or it can be off of an object to the side, and a destination point, press enter to come back to the command line. The stretch tool works with um, something known as a crossing. In AutoCAD, um, before I go into the stretch tool, um, I want to make a, a little distinction about how you select objects. Um, if you select by window, so for example, let's say I want to copy these objects right here. So I go to my copy tool, and if I make, um, if I go from left to right when I select things, it will include only those things that are in that blue rectangle. Okay, so as you could have, as you might have seen, this object was partially in the window, but not completely. So it wasn't part of the selection set. Let me show you that again. Copy, and then I go from from a point on the left side to include only the objects that are inside the rectangle. So this. The one down here uh, horizontally will not be included in that selection set. Okay. Now, as opposed to using something called a crossing, which goes from right to left. So if I click on copy and then I use virtually the same rectangle, you'll notice it's green. It's going to include everything in the window plus anything that is partially in the window. So this time, this object down here, this line, was part of the selection set. Okay, now going back to the stretch tool, if I click on stretch and I use a crossing, okay, I've selected what I want to stretch, and what will happen is it will stretch these two corners only, not the ones on this side. So I'm going to click a base point and a destination point, right? And again, that's stretch and in that process, I use the uh, crossing manner of, of selecting objects. All right, rotate. Um, if I click on rotate and I select an object and I press enter, it's going to ask me for a base point. The base point is about which the point about which the object will rotate. So if I want to rotate from this point here, I select it, and I can either um, give an angle. So if I want to rotate it 30 degrees from that base point, it's going to go in a counterclockwise direction. I'm going to undo that and I'm going to rotate again using the same base point. Um, I can also you know, use, right now ortho is on. Ortho is this tool right, right down here. And that's going to constrain the rotation to 90 degree angles. Okay. If I do the rotate again, and I, I you can might have seen I just entered uh, the short keystrokes R O, and I select that rectangle, and I pick the same base point. This time I'm going to turn ortho off and it will allow me to, to do incremental um, rotations. Okay, so that's the rotate tool. Uh, the mirror tool, uh, I have this triangle as is shown also in this in the icon. I select the triangle, press enter when I'm done selecting objects, and just keep in mind you can add multiple objects within any selection set press enter, and it's going to ask me for a mirror line. So if I want to 
make my triangle similar to this configuration, I would select a point along that, that edge of the triangle and you can see those, those green lines appearing. Those are tracking lines and they indicate that I have a vertical line. Make note though too that ortho would allow you to, to, to do this as well. All right, so I'm going to click down here and now I have um, a mirror image. Um, one option that you're going to see, I'll, I'll go through this one again, uh, mirror, select the object, pick a, an axis point, pick a second axis point, somewhere along this vertical line, could be up here, could be on the object, could be down here. It'll ask you if you want to erase the source object, if I type in Y for yes. It's going to mirror the object, but eliminate the, the original one. Um, the scale tool, uh, you select an object, press enter once you're done selecting the object or objects, uh, assign a base point, and I can either uh, do this by eyeballing it, or I can give a specific um, scale factor. If I type in 2, for example, the object will double in size. Okay, and If you do a decimal like 0.5, it would be half of the size. All right, the trim tool right here. Uh, let's say, for example, I've got this line and I want to get rid of the lines that are above that line. Let's zoom in a little bit closer. If I use the trim tool and I click on this line, what it will ask you for is to select what you want to uh, use as the sort of cutting edge. So I'm going to cut everything above this line. Okay, press enter and then you can select these objects. Um, you see that there is a fence here that you can use. If I click on fence, I can make a line that cuts through all of the objects I want to trim. Okay, so that's trim. Um, if you use this pull down menu here, you're going to see one called extend. And I'll, I'll do the opposite process for this one. I want to make these lines so they all go up to that, that line that's at a diagonal. I click the line that I want to extend to, press enter, and then click on each individual line and I can use the fence option or some of these other options as well. If you have a lot of them to do you might want to explore some of those. All right that's extend. Uh, I'm going to pan over here to the left to show you uh, some of these other tools. This is fillet and what fillet does is it brings two corners together. Um, they can be angled lines or they can be at 90 degrees like this one is right here. So I click on fill it and then I select two lines. Okay, I can do the same thing if they cross each other like this. Fill it. Okay. Another thing that you can do with fill it is you can assign a radius so that the line comes and, and curves as it meets the other one. If I use my fill it tool uh, radius is one of the options, and I can input, let's say, uh, we'll make this one, be my radius, and then when I select the objects, it will form a curve at their intersection. Same thing with these. Okay, the other one that you'll find under this, um, this, uh, down here is chamfer, which um, is similar, only instead of making a radius, you can use it to create uh, what's known as a chamfer. So it is a, um, it's, just, it's going to have a straight edge, but it'll be at an angle. Um, and basically, typically the setting you would make would be at a 45, um, but I can um, input a distance for my chamfer by typing in D or selecting it from down here. And if I was to say one and choose one for both of them, this will give me a, 
a one, um, one unit dimension here and here as well, and I can do that for the other one. Okay, we've already looked at the, the array tool. Uh, one that we haven't looked at yet is this one called offset, which is very useful as well. If I click on offset, um, basically, if I want to make a circle and then make another circle with the same center, but a specific distance away from the, the original one, um, I give a distance for the offset, like I'll do one for this one, and then I select what I want to offset and select a point either inside or outside of the circle. So let's do that again. Uh, offset is the short keystroke for that. One. I pick what I want to offset and I select a point outside. I can do the same thing and select a point on the inside of the circle to offset it towards the in inside. So depending on which direction you want to go with that. Okay, that's the, the majority and perhaps the most useful of the modify tools. You'll find more of them uh, shown under, you know, when you click on, mod on the little arrow next to the modify um, panel text. Uh, erase, of course, is a useful one as well.